a projectile will have some initial speed u, usually angled to the horizontal. And they move freely under gravity because the only force acting on them is their weight. In order to solve a projectile problem, you need to use the Suvat equations in two dimensions, both vertically and horizontally. That means we'll need to split the initial speed into its vertical and horizontal components. So using trig, the vertical component is opposite the angle, so that comes out as u sine theta. And the horizontal component of the speed is adjacent to the angle, so that comes out as u cos theta. So after that brief introduction, let's go through an example. So a particle P is projected from a point O on a horizontal plane with speed 28 meters per second at 30 degrees to the horizontal. After projection, the particle moves freely under gravity until it strikes the plane at a point A. So find the greatest height of the particle, the time of flight and the distance OA. So let's begin by drawing a diagram. So we have a horizontal plane with a particle P at point O. So initially the speed of the particle is 28 meters per second angled at 30 degrees to the horizontal. So the particle moves freely under gravity so it's going to follow a parabolic curve. It's going to reach a maximum height and then it's going to descend until it strikes the ground at a point A. So the first thing we're going to try and find is the maximum height of the particle P. And so because we're trying to find a height, which is a vertical distance, then we're going to use SUVAT in the vertical direction. So we're trying to find the vertical displacement, so we're going to put question mark below S. Um, the initial speed in the vertical direction is this component here. So if we draw a right angle triangle, the component we're looking for is the opposite to the angle 30 degrees. And so that means the component we're looking for is 28 sine 30. Um, the moment when it reaches its maximum height, at that point its velocity in the vertical direction is instantaneously zero. The particle moves freely under gravity, so um, the only force acting on it is its weight, so its acceleration is negative g, and we'll ignore t for now. So we'll use the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as. That's the equation that doesn't involve t. So if we plug in the values, we get 0 is equal to u squared plus 2as. So if u is 28 sine 30, well, we know sine 30 is a half, so u is equal to 14. Therefore, u squared has to be 196. And then 2as is going to be negative 2gs. So when we rearrange this for s, we get s is equal to 196 over 2g. And if we take g to be 9.8, then this comes out quite nicely as 10 meters. So the maximum height of the particle p is 10 meters. So the second thing we have to find is the time of flight, or in other words, the time it takes for p to get from o to a. So again, we're going to think about SUVAT in the vertical direction. So when the particle P is at A, then its total vertical displacement is zero, because at both O and A, then it's essentially on the plane. Its initial velocity in the vertical direction, we said was 28 sine 30, which is 14. A is again minus G and t is what we're trying to find, and we'll ignore v. So we'll use s equals ut plus half a t squared. Now plugging in the values, 0 is equal to 14t minus g over 2 t squared. So if we factorize out the t from this equation, we get t times 14 minus g over 2 t. And so the solution when t is equal to zero describes when the particle p is at the origin, whereas the solution to 14 minus g over 2t is equal to zero, um, that describes when the particle is at a. 
So we're going to try and solve this for t. So 14 equals g over 2t. Therefore, t is equal to 28 over g. And if we take g to be 9.8, then this comes out as approximately 2.9 seconds to 2 sig fig. For the final part of the problem, we have to find the distance between O and A. So because we're trying to find a horizontal distance, um, that means we're going to have to use the SUVAT equations in the horizontal direction. So we're trying to find the displacement of P when it arrives at A. So we'll put a question mark below, um, below S. The initial speed in the horizontal direction is this component right here, so it's adjacent to the angle, therefore u is equal to 28 cos 30. The acceleration of p in the horizontal direction is zero because there are no forces acting on p um, horizontally. So there is the weight, but um, the weight acts down. And finally, um, we just worked out the time it takes for P to get from O to A. That was 2.9 seconds, um, but we won't use the rounded answer because that could introduce some error. Instead, we'll use our exact answer, which was 28 over G. So we'll put a cross below V. Um, so we'll use S equals ZT plus a half AT squared. Um, since a is equal to zero, then this whole term uh, right here is equal to zero as well. Therefore, that leaves us with s equals ut, which means s is equal to 28 cos 30 um, times 28 over g. And if we take g to be 9.8 again, then this comes out as 69 meters to 2 sig fig. So the distance between O and A is 69 meters.